Welcome to this channel. Today I'll be introducing you to molecular docking and we'll be using Molegro Virtual Docker. If you follow that tutorial, we've learned how to draw and visualize 2D structures of compounds using ChemDraw. We've also learned how to convert it into 3D structures using Chem3D. And today we are carrying out molecular docking. Now what is molecular docking? Molecular docking is a computational technique is used to predict the interaction between two molecules and these molecules are a ligand and a receptor. The ligand is usually a small molecule which is the compound you're working with and the receptor is often a protein or an enzyme. Now the main reason for carrying out molecular docking is to be able to estimate or assess the binding affinity between these two molecules that's the ligand and the receptor and also see the orientation of that small molecule within the active site of the receptor. Now this suggests that not every part of the receptor is the best part for docking. If you want to carry out docking, it's important you get the correct active site. Now this is a figure that tries to show what I'm talking about. You have a small molecule called ligand, you have your target and this is the active site. Now the interaction has taken place and the docking gives us an estimate of that interaction in terms of binding energy, binding affinity, which is often um, given to us as docking scores. We'll see that later. Now what are some of the applications of molecular docking? Molecular docking is often used to um, find molecules or compounds that can serve as medicine, especially if they can interact with biological targets. The thing behind this is if a certain molecule or compound can interact with a biological target implicated um, in the disease, then it's possible that it's able to either inhibit that biological target or modulate it. And then that's very important in dealing with diseases. Let me give you an example. For instance, if you have an enzyme that is necessary for the replication of cancer cells. Now, it means that cancer cells need that enzyme to work for them to replicate within the body. If you are able to get a molecule that is able to inhibit those, um, inhibit that enzyme, it means that the cancer cells will not be able to replicate. And by default, you've destroyed the cancer cells. By extension, you've destroyed the cancer cells. Also, molecular docking is also used for designing enzymes, especially for industrial and medical purposes. Now, it's also important we understand how diseases affect biological systems, because by knowing that we would know how to disrupt those biological systems, and we use molecular docking to also carry that out, to also do that, sorry. Now, if you go through literature, there are several steps for molecular docking, but I've designed um, these steps so that it can be easy for us. So the first thing in carrying out molecular docking is to model your compounds. Now you can use ChemDraw and then convert it to 3D using Chem3D, or you can use Avogadro. After doing that, it's important you download the receptor you're working with. The receptor you're working with is the enzyme or protein of the disease or the microorganism. And then it's important you get the correct enzyme and you can easily get that through literature. You can download this receptor from what we call a protein data bank. Now, the next thing is to dock the ligands against the receptor. And you can use different softwares for doing that. You can use Pyrex, you can use Molegro Virtual Docker and many other things. Today we'll be using Molegro Virtual Docker. And then once you dock, you, you would obtain docking scores. The docking score is a measure of the binding affinity between um, the compounds and the receptor. A lot of times, the more negative your value, the better the interaction. So note this, the more negative the value, the assumption is that the interaction is better. Now, once you've gotten your docking scores, the next thing is to look at the interactions responsible for the docking scores you've gotten. And then you can use Discovery Studio 
Molegro virtual viewer or Pimo to do that. Now there's different softwares you can use for docking. You can use Autodock. You can use Pyrex, which is um, infused with Autodock and Autodock Vina. You can use Molegro virtual docker, which we used to do. You can use GemDock. You can use SwissDock. You can use ZDock, and there are many other um, softwares you can use. But it's important you know that they have different um, docking scores or scoring functions. Now, another key thing in molecular docking is selecting the correct binding site. I told you that's what we called active sites. Now, there are several ways to do that. You can use literature. Now, when people publish um, drug um, on drug research, especially if they've used molecular docking, they often give the coordinates for the binding sites they use. And given that um, their work has gone through um, through um, review, it's expected that it can be reliable. So you can use what you have in literature. Especially if you have good literature, you can use the binding site quoted in literature. You can also use servers such as cast be fine site to the ligand meta pocket and other servers to get the correct binding site you can work with. Then you can use molecular docking softwares like Discovery Studio, Molecular Virtual Docker, and many other things. I think you can also use Pymo to get the correct binding site. So the first thing is that you should have installed Molegro Virtual Docker. So this is it. So you should have installed it. If you've not done that, then it's important you install Molecule Virtual Docker. The next thing is to import molecules. Now, what are the molecules you'll be importing? The molecules you'll be importing are the receptor which you obtain from the protein data bank. Now, this receptor is based on the disease or microorganism you're working with. For instance, I'm working on antidiabetes. So this is alpha amylase um, enzyme. The code name is 10SE. Now, so what I would do is I would import it. Then I'm also importing um, the compound I'm working with. That's my ligand, which is finasteride. Now, so I will import it. Okay, so let's see this. So when importing, if you're not working with cofactors, you remove water, you leave protein now. I intend to work with, we have finasteride, it's there. And we have three different ligands. Now, please consider this. These three different ligands came with the protein. So we often call them co-crystallized ligand. And the importance of this co-crystallized ligand is that um, they often help us to know the binding sites we can work with. So instead of stressing yourself, Molecular Virtual Docker helps you to know the binding sites using the co-crystallized ligand. So in this case, I just want to use BGC. I don't want the down, so I'm not importing them. If you want to work with them, you can import them. So let's import this. Good. Now, if you look at this, you see that this is your protein and these are your ligands. Now, this ligand is the finasteride and this is your co-crystallized ligand. Now, another thing you could also do to compare correctly is to import the standard, a standard. Now, if you're working with diabetes, some of the common standard drugs we know are acabos, metformin, and many other things. So I will be importing acabos. So like I said, I will import a standard drug used against that disease. In this case, I'm importing acabos. That's the number from PopChem 41774. So we import a couple. Now let's check the compounds we have. So we have three compounds 
we have finasteride, our compound, the compound we intend to dock unknown. In this case, we'll consider it as unknown. We also have the co-crystallized ligand. Remember, the crystallized ligand is the ligand that came originally with the protein. We use it as a standard too. Then we have our carbos. So you can see. So we have three structures, the three structures. You can see three of them. Finasteride, the co-crystallized ligand, which is group of pyranose, and then we have Acabo. So let's go on to dock. So using Molecular Virtual Docker, the first thing you do is to search space setup. So click on it. Now, if you observe, it's um, the search space is on the ligand, but that's not what I want. I want it to be on the co crystallized ligand itself. So I'll click this. You see that shifted. Look at this. Good. So and these are the coordinates, and these coordinates are key if you are working with other softwares. But that's not what we are considering today. So click on OK. So I am choosing the coordinate for the co-crystallized ligand because I believed, I believe that it was kept there to guide um, others that will be using it for that will be using the receptor for docking. So I'm taking it. Then Go to prepare molecules and then you can click on preparation. It's fine. Go to detect cavities. You can detect the cavities where um, there can be interactions. And you can choose to restrict it to your search space. And you would see that. Okay, so I've done that. And told us no cavities we have found. Now, the next thing is protein preparation. Now, if you look at this protein preparation, we have a warning. So what do we do? Simply go um, scroll down and then you see the problem. Click on it. Then you rebuild. You can close it and then go back then go to protein preparation. You don't find it there again. The next thing is to go to um, you're not using setup side chain flexibility. If you are working on flexible docking, then you use that. If you're using a template molecule, then you use template docking. But so we'll just go directly to docking wizard. And then you can check this. Now, remember the three ligands we are docking are fin finasteride, which is the compound we are working with, the new compound we in code downloaded to check if it will show any form of interaction with the protein. BGC is our co-crystallized ligand, and 41774 is a standard drug used against diabetes. Given that we are working on a receptor for diabetes alpha amylase. Now, so we go to this. Now we select Moldoc score. Next. Next. And then this and it tells us that workspace contains no cavity. Now it's important that if you're working your um protein contain cavities, but in this case, we just it says though it's possible to drop without cavities, it is recommended to reduce the search space by detecting cavities. Let's check let's check something. Let's see if we can detect cavities and let's not restrict this. So, okay, so wow, it was able to detect cavities. Can you see that? So, we can go back to our docking wizard and then simply check. We have this, 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 and then you see that it's no longer there. So, you dock. And let's talk now. It has started docking. Now you can go here to see some of the Moldoc scores. Now we'll wait for it to complete, and once it's complete, then we will visualize and see the docking scores.